Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are having a great day. After natural gas trading session came to an end on Friday, I completely understand there is a lot of fear in the market because this weekend is going to shape a lot of future for natural gas price as the G7 meeting will be held in Japan. Now, Biden admin greenlights the LNG exports from Alaska project. Now, this is a big deal. And on the other end, G7 liquefied natural gas is a bridge fuel to climate disaster. Now, this is a hint towards something. But before we get into that, if you guys are here for the first time, you're doing a step to date with everything to do with natural gas, scroll down, tap the red subscribe button. While you're there, slap a like on the video. Just help the YouTube algorithm, push the video out to more people so more people can stay up to date with what is happening with natural gas. Now, the reason this is really important is Washington on the 13th of April, the Biden administration on Thursday approved exports of liquefied natural gas from the Alaska LNG project that one day could help the United States compete with Russia to ship natural gas from Antarctica to the Asia. Now, I just want to say the Arctic to the Asia is going to be a big deal. You do realize it. the reason Russia is so huge on natural gas is due to the fact that they are a very big country and they're able to provide natural gas to a lot of different parts of the world. They can actually provide it to two different continents just by one go. And what I'm trying to say is that Europe is heavily heavily dependent on russia to be able to receive the natural gas and you guys know when russia stopped providing it that was one of the massive driving factor of natural gas price all the way up to nine to ten dollars now the same thing has happened in the future because you guys know eu is trying to ban russian lng for future if that happens obviously eu will have to look for a new alternate and let's just say america is trying to become that now, backers of roughly 39 billion project hope to be operational by 2030. And on the other end, you guys know Russia right now has no problems with China and stuff like that. They are willing to do their trades in Yuan, which is obviously the Chinese currency. And some of the natural gas has already been provided to China with the use of Yuan as the trading form. Now, you need to understand if Russia and Asia are still able to do the trade with natural gas, but EU is the only one having problems, they will have to look for alternate and America will be the big one. Another thing is you guys know the G7 meeting. Japan is not happy with the climate problems that natural gas is causing. So they want to cut down on the investment that G7 or Group 7 is providing to obviously the natural gas market. The eyes of the world are on Japan this weekend as the energy ministers of some of the world's largest economy meet to discuss the global climate and energy policy. Now keep in mind if they do decide to go with Japan and agree with what their plans are for future, that means they're going to cut down their investment into natural gas. And you guys know that would not be something that a lot of long traders want to see. Youth advocates and other climate advocates jumped into an action to ask the Biden administration a stand against US further LNG and export expansion. Later drafts have since walked back language on investing in LNG exports through and there is still much in the draft to spark concern. Now keep in mind if you are a heavy trader of natural gas this meeting is going to play a very crucial role in terms of where the trading session will open of natural gas on Monday. I know you might be very fearful due to the meeting but keep in mind that Japan is trying their best to try to cut down so there might be some sort of middle point they will meet but we know for a fact that this meeting is going to have a very significant impact on the future of natural gas price. Now, if we look at how natural gas reacted just before closing on Friday, it's really good. That's all I can say. So after we did actually see a pullback around this zone, it was able to see a little bit of recovery because there was a lot of buy orders coming in. People were very excited that the G7 meeting might be positive when it comes to the price of natural gas because if it's taken the right way you do realize they they decide to cut down on the amount of supply so you know the production of natural gas 
You know, there will be less natural gas in the world. What does that mean? There will be steam demand, so the price will decide to jump up, which caused, as you guys can see, four hours straight, a lot of buy orders decided to come in. It is not portrayed as significantly on the chart, but you know, on Monday, it is going to be portrayed very significantly on the chart because a lot of trade sessions might actually cause a lot of people to buy into natural gas even more. Another thing which is really interesting is lack luster spring demand and robust supply take a toll on weekly natural gas cash and the features prize it right now you need to understand we just need to be a little bit patient if you're a long trader of natural gas give it end of april and it will start recovering very quickly because one thing you need to understand is if you decide to look at the rsi line it is starting to get just in the middle zone and seeing that it is super trend is clearly uptrend and the rsi is still sitting in the middle I'm just saying there is a lot of potential for it to still keep climbing. Another thing is natural gas exporters skirt Washington's scrutiny of China. Now the United States booming natural gas export industry is trying to stay out of the fray of rising tension between US and China and it's getting cover from unusual quarter some of Beijing's critics in gulp. So pretty much you guys know how United States and China are not in good terms because obviously China is trying to use their currency and try to make it global and start or stop using the US currency. And let's just say the people who are exporters of natural gas do not want to be involved because the US lawmakers of both parties are pursuing tough on China bills after the conflict involving spy balloons, TikTok, and you guys know there's a lot of things that shipping visit Russia was also not taken lightly. Another thing is NSE to introduce WTI crude oil natural gas feature contracts from May 15. This is really cool because you guys do understand National Stock Exchange, which is inside of India, they are going to be allowing features of natural gas to be traded on their platform, which is quite good. Now, what is going to happen? in the natural gas market in the near future when well, simple terms it is going to be sitting in the same area which is between two dollars and two dollars twenty cents before it is able to make a decision in terms of where to go because personally i am just really excited to see how this g7 meeting there's so much happening with natural gas the production increase and also the demand will start to increase when all the countries will try to fill up their supplies again or just fill up their storage pretty much now finally tunisia domestic oil production is down by 16 percent and natural gas resources by 14 percent does this mean that there will be less production? Yes, and also the resources are much lower. Does that mean that the this is going to have a negative impact on the production of natural gas and maybe help the price in the long term? I personally think so. Other than that, I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. If you did, drop a like on it. If you guys have any specific questions, let me know though, down in the comment section. I'll try to respond to you. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you very soon. I'm out. Peace.